Do, 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 do. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for visiting. I'm Nancy Gammon. Would you like to see blooms coming and going? In this video, I'll show you how to create an ice dyed flower on both the front and the back of a t-shirt at the same time. This is going to be fun. I'm starting with a clean white 100% cotton t-shirt that I have washed and dried without the use of any fabric softener. I'm getting it smoothed out here on my surface because I want to do a little measuring before I get started. I'm going to create my dyed design in the center of this shirt so I want to find that midline. If the shirt has side seams, you can line those up, but this shirt doesn't. So I'm going to use this nifty center finding ruler that I have to find the midline of this shirt. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a regular measuring stick. And I'm going to mark one point that's about halfway down the shirt and put a safety pin in at the center. Then I'm going to mark another point that's just a couple of inches from the hem. And then put the third one up by the neckline. This area can get kind of bunchy and weird once we start folding and turning, and so it will be helpful to have a mark up here. And then I'm just going to stick my hand in here. Uh, inside the shirt so that I'm only pinning the front layer of the shirt and then I am going to whoops I'm going to flip the shirt over and for good luck I'm going to mark the back too because once the fabric starts getting folded up into its little origami shape it can start to get confusing about what is where and so having some marks on the back I think will be helpful. So I'm just going to do the same thing, center, hem, and the top and put some more safety pins in here and then once I have it all pinned up I am going to soak the t-shirt in a soda ash solution for about 10 minutes and the soda ash will help get the shirt ready to accept the dye and have that be permanent. So again, I'm just putting my hand in here to make sure I'm only pinning the top layer. And when we do start folding, I'm going to want to remember that it's the entry of the safety pin that's marking. Oops, I have an extra one there. The midline. All right, so it's pinned front and back. I'm going to soak it into the soda ash and be back with you in a few minutes. I have the shirt mostly wrung out from the soda ash solution, but it's still pretty damp, and I'm folding it in half crosswise, trying to get these safety pins lined up on each side and I'm looking for the entry point of the safety pin since that's marking that midline and doing the same so this is the let's see this is the front of the shirt and then this side over here is the back so I'm getting that those safety pins lined up as well and the top of the shirt is not going to line up at this point so we're going to save those markings for in a minute and just focus on the bottom half of the shirt since we are creating a bloom both on the front and on the back so the first thing I'm going to do is take out these safety pins that are kind of at the midline of the shirt, um, halfway up I mean from the hem, and I'm just going to set them aside as kind of a visual marker. And I'm going to 
Actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to take out all the these bottom pins too as well right now so that we can fold without having to worry about them now that that's lined up. Okay, now I'm going to bring up the hem and I'm going to stop at about where that midline safety pin marker was. And I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. I'm just going to start with one side picking up this top layer and moving it down so that the folded edges align here. I'm going to do that once, twice, three times. And then I'm going to take a great big binder clip. You can see here is where the um, the underarm seam is to the sleeve. So I'm going to come in from that a little bit so that the bloom is just kind of in the basic front of this shirt. And I'm just going to clip this just so that it stays in place while I'm working with this other side. I don't want to lose the work that I've done. So I'm going to unfold it a little bit just to make sure that I can get this side nice and straight. Again, I'm picking up the top layer, bringing it down to so that the folds, folded edges align. Doing that once, twice, three times. And I'm going to take my other binder clip, again, kind of coming in a couple of inches from the sleeve area. And clipping it again. So now I'm going to flip the shirt over and we're going to fold up the bloomy area on the other side. So now I do want to get this mark, the center mark kind of lined up here and perpen perpendicular. So I'm going to unclip this bring this side edge down so that the folds meet. Doing that once, twice, and three times. And giving it a good clip again, right there. And I'll take that safety pin out while I'm thinking about it. And then again on this side, Getting that pin over so that this side is as smooth and perpendicular as possible. I'll unclip that, kind of move that extra fabric aside, and then come down one, two, three times. And I'll give that a good clip. And get this safety pin out. So now I have folded areas for the blooms on the front and back and then this extra shirt fabric in the center. And I'm just going to kind of loosen this up so that it doesn't contain any sharp folds to it. Any time that there's a fold it will leave a line or a design in the pattern. So I just want to get things kind of opened up and loose so that it will form a nice abstract design. Okay, so I have, I have uh, many folds at the top and the two thick folds underneath in both, both cases on both sides. And now I'm going to put it into my dye pan so I have a, a plastic bin and then a cooling rack, like what you might use to cool your baked cookies. And then I have a metal baking pan or roasting pan with holes punched in the bottom for drainage and just some matte board scraps set on top so that the fabric doesn't pick up the design of the metal by accident. So I'm going to set 
my fabric, my t-shirt in here and get rid of these binder clips. And instead I'm going to wrap the bloom areas with a little protective rag. This is a makeup remover towelette that's gone through the laundry, but you can use any small scrap of fabric. I'm going to do the same side over here. In working with powdered dyes, they don't always all liquefy, and the powder can leave spots on fabric that I don't care for very much. So these little towelettes are helping the bloom kind of keep its shape while it's dying and also protecting it from any powdered splotches. And I'm going to put a different colored rag down the center to protect that. And I'm using a different color. I'm going to kind of arrange it carefully so that when I'm sprinkling on the dye, it will be easy to see where the bloom is and where the rest of the t-shirt is. I'm going to use one more rag on the other side just to make sure that area is protected. And now I'm going to cover it with a layer of ice cubes. All right, so I thought it would be fun to make two different colors of blooms. So there's a different flower on the front than on the back. So for both blooms at the very tip, I'm going to put a little bit of soft orange just to create that center dark area that you often see on a flower. And I'm using Procyon Fiber Reactive Dyes, they're powdered dye, that um, is specially designed to work with 100% plant fibers, and this is a 100% cotton t-shirt. So now I'm going to make one bloom turquoise, kind of a bright blue. And it is important to use the fiber reactive dyes with this process that I'm showing you. Uh, RIT dye is a different dyeing process. And then I'm going to use lemon yellow on this side to create a bright yellow bloom. And you do want to be wearing your dust mask while you're doing this. And then the rest of the t-shirt, I'm going to do just a kind of a wild bright red and pink. So I'm sprinkling on a red called Chili Fuego, which will be nice and spicy for us. And then kind of a dramatic deep pink called Dragon Fruit, kind of a purpley pink. Okay, so now we will let this sit aside overnight for the ice to melt and the powder to turn to liquid and the color to seep down into the fabric. So let it rest about 22 hours. I am so curious to see how this double bloom experiment turns out. Looks like we've got a good blue color on one side and yellow on the other. All right, let's unfold and take a look here. So, hmm, we've got our nice yellow blossom on the front and our big blue one on the back. Ooh, look at that gold or green rather kind of peeking through there. What I'm going to do now is take the t-shirt over to the deep sink and I'm going to rinse it in cold water until the water runs clear and then I'm going to wash it in hot water with textile detergent which is a special kind of detergent that will take any loose dye and kind of send it away and then I'll rinse that out and then let it soak in retain in hot water for about 20 minutes and rinse that out. So I'll take care of this behind the scenes and be back with you to show you the final result. Here's the completed shirt, washed, dried, and pressed with a hot iron, a nice bright yellow and orange blossom on the front, 
and a bold turquoise one on the back. I hope this finds you surrounded in flowers. Keep experimenting. I'll see you next time. Do 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 do